A lot has Thank been you. said uh, at uh, this COP26 meeting. What were your main takeaways, especially as somebody who is very, very much involved with gas, which is, of course, seen as being far cleaner than coal? Well, I think the, 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 the focus of the government is very clear in India that they are pushing towards cleaner energy, be it natural gas, be it solar, etc. cetera. Um, um, and you've, you've seen big announcements um, by big industrial houses in India uh, getting into clean energy. So um, I know it's a difficult target, but I think with the right policies uh, in place, uh, it is possible. Absolutely. You know, you're making this transition, of course, with this uh, pledge to be net zero by 2070. Now, the, the near-term goal is actually to increase the share of non-fossil um, in energy, the energy mix in India, to something like 50%. How does that dovetail into your industry? Well, I think it's uh, both complement each other because uh, India's energy demand is rising year on year. Um, you know, you can see it in the normal petrol and diesel, uh, you know, in natural gas, we are seeing it in our business, any hydrocarbon. So the incremental demand, I think, will be shared um, um, uh, more with the, you know, non-fossil and, fo uh, and fossil. I think that percentage will change, but the growth in both will continue because, you know, with 1.3 billion people, you cannot satisfy with one or the other. Uh, talk to us about the energy mix. When it comes to natural gas, how will that play out? What percentage will that be maybe in terms of five, ten years down the road? Well, currently it's very low. It's only about six odd percent. The government's target is to take it to 15 percent, um, which I think they have implemented uh, the correct policies uh, which have been announced. Uh, they have filtered down on the ground mostly and... Uh, uh, the reason I say mostly is because there is there is still some, you know, uh, tweaks that need to be done and actually be implemented. Once that is done, I think uh, investments in natural wells will go up. You, you know, there was a big discovery of Reliance and BP that just happened, which has increased the domestic production. I think there are a few more on the line, um, which, which would come through. And I think with the right... Uh, marketing uh, with the prices which they have now announced that will be free market. I think that is the biggest uh, hurdle that was faced by producers earlier. That free marketing was not there, right. even though it was. Uh, so now, now that in the new policy it is completely free market, um, you know that's that's a that's a big plus. It's all on revenue sharing contracts. Most of the approvals are on mm -hmm. self certification basis, but more needs to be done, and which I think the government is proactive, especially this government. Um, and they, they just basically want that you bid, you win, you comply with the bid terms, and that's it. So I think if that kind of trickles down, which it is, uh, there'll be a big boost right. in investments in, uh, in natural gas. I'm, I'm just wondering how achieves, uh, achievable the targets are. We know that India wants gas to be about 15% of its energy mix by 2030. How challenging would that be? What would it take? Well, uh, uh, two things. One... Uh, any sort of artificial price caps need to be removed. Um, whether it's old gas or new gas, it doesn't matter. This is, you know, these are molecules and heat that we are selling. Second, um, especially under revenue sharing contracts, all approvals should be only on self-certification basis because, and the government is, you know, we are more than happy for anybody to come and audit and check, etc. Because what happens is there, is, there are sometimes, uh, you know, India used to be on a cost recovery regime. Um, till you know a decade or 15 years ago so uh, there was a government uh, interest because there was a cost, uh, people would recover costs so hence they had to check now in revenue share there's nothing you know it's it's completely my risk what i spend whether i spend 100 dollars or 100 million doesn't matter so i think that, but as i said that process has been implemented and it is getting more and more so one is that and one is you know some gas is still under control pricing if uh, when that is right. eased out, it'll, it'll, it'll bring in a lot of investments. Uh, speaking of prices, what's the outlook for gas prices, given that the current prices don't take into account the increase in the uh, international market? Well, uh, uh, the, India has sort of three prices. 
One is the domestic gas, which is, again, low $2.9, which has, it has been fixed. Uh, one is from the offshore, which is at 6.13. Uh, and one is the third price, which is free market price, which, like, you know, we are selling at $10 or, you know, $10, $11 is being sold at. Third, LNG, which is uh, the weighted average price for this year is already $11.5. Current pricing of LNG is about $13.5. So it's, it's, you know, there are this is a disparity of prices that I'm talking about. So I think if everything, um, prices will remain very strong. You know, city gas, uh, pipe natural gas is being sold at 15 to $20 easily. Uh, industrial gas to some industrial units are buying gas at 15 to $20. So there is a demand at that price and it is viable. So but my take is always market price means market price. Let the market decide. You know, it depends on demand and supply, like what happened in the U.S. You were you at 11, 10, 11 bucks a decade ago. Shale happened. It dropped to $1 or $2 because supply increased, demand was not there. 